There we go. Now it is recording. So good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to another of our virtual coffee talks. I hope your coffee is ready and it's strong because you will all need to have uh, your brain cells working because we will tackle another really important topic, um, um, something that we see happening in the workplace quite often. And we want to talk about it. We want to open the topic and see what is it we can do about it. And the topic is, as you know, female rivalry. So um, today I have with me two wonderful guests that I will be introducing in just a moment. I, I really appreciate that uh, Dagmar and uh, Newton had the opportunity to connect and to spend that moment with us. But before I start introducing them, let me just tell you that this talk is sponsored by the She Leads Initiative. She Leads is actually an online holistic leadership program for women who want to succeed in a male-dominated workplace. And if you're seeing me for the first time, and my name is Alena Huberova, and I'm somewhat a hybrid between a coach, mentor, and guide for women in management. And I founded the She Leads program already five years ago. So my mission is to help women really tap into their inner strength and develop themselves as people and professionals in order to lead uh, the people around them. So that's a little bit about what is it we do. And these talks happen um, typically once a month and we always choose something that is hot, yeah? Something that I often hear from my own clients or something that I, that I see is happening in the market. So such topic is for the debate today. And um, I want to introduce our two guests you have had the chance to look at their very impressive bios. So I'm not going to go through the lengthy explanations, but just to uh, explain to you um, um, very briefly. My first guest is actually based in the same country as myself uh, in the Czech Republic. We are both sitting in Prague, right, Dagmar? <laughs> so yes. my first guest is Dagmar, Dagmar Cisarovska. And um, she is the Regional Emergency Preparedness and Response Advisor at Exxon Mobile, based here in the Czech Republic. Um, she actually spent most of her career in Exxon Mobile in various roles, from communications learning and people to develop uh, people development, all the way to marketing. <laughs> um, she is a mom of a teenage son and an owner of a teenage horse. <laughs> when I read that in her bio, I was laughing so much. So two teenagers at home. Um, um, Dagmar is also a founder of a, a program called Exchange for You, which supports employees from 50 different corporations in networking, sharing, and cooperation. She dedicates her free time to psychotherapy and mentoring. And the rest you can you can read <laughs> in her bio on the LinkedIn page. All right. So Dagmar, lovely to have you here. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Yes. And I love your background. <laughs> really um, autumn related, right? So uh, the, our second uh, speaker is um, Newton Manohar. Uh, Newton is a wellness coach and, listen to this, faculty sleep whisperer and personalized therapeutic perfumer. I mean, Newton, you will need to explain this to us, okay? So the time will come to that. Um, <laughs> Um, again, I was asking uh, Newton this morning, how should I introduce you? Because there's so much to say. So um, who can I choose? I, I, don't, I, I don't know where to start, <laughs> Newton. Um, so she is um, a researcher, faculty and corporate trainer. She won numerous awards. Uh, she created over 90 modules on mind and body interventions for well-being. 
Um, she worked with a whole range of clients, uh, including the major global corporations, um, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, you think that's <laughs> a lot to say. I mean, both of my ladies have extremely impressive background. So Newton, welcome. Thank you so much for being Thank here. You. And um, since, since I have you here already on the screen, Newton, um, the first question um, that, uh, well, actually, actually, before we get to the first question, I want to make sure that all of us are on the same page, because I explained that this talk is all about female revelry. So let's just make sure we all understand what, what it is we're talking about. So um, female revelry happens when a woman uses her power to keep another woman down or she proactively undermines her credibility. Um, what are these symptoms? What is it that we see happening in the workplace? You know, how is it women do this? Um, it might be through gossiping, through um, spreading incorrect information to undermine someone else's credibility. It might be by exclusion, by withholding information, by spreading rumors, mocking someone's appearance. It might be silent treatment, um, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so I just wanted to make sure that you all understand what is it we're talking about. So the first question, and now, yes, Newton, the first question I'm going to start with you. Uh, this topic is obviously quite important to you. So I wanted to ask you why would you give us a bit of a background? So yeah, this question would actually help you understand a bit more about my background as well. So since 2004, I've been working in behavior uh, and uh, market research across Asia Pacific, primarily for brands, but also for social development projects. So behavior is something that I've been very, very interested in. And uh, since 2010, I've been working in well-being. So I'm a faculty for well-being. And somehow my voice puts people to sleep and hence the sleep whisperer. All right. So uh, when I saw your post on LinkedIn about the topic, it was something that, you know, that's not normally uh, an area that I study, but then it was something that I had experienced and, you know, something that had baffled me for a while. So that I thought, you know, I should reach out to you and speak about it. Um, so, um, so as a bit more about my personal background, I have Asperger's, so which means a lot of social cues. It's, it's kind of comes under your broad spectrum autism. So a lot of social cues that people kind of get I tend to miss out, it just flies under my radar. All right, so something has to be really large before it kind of, you know, gets into my attention. I mean, it's uh, when something is so deviant from, you know, normal behavior, that's the only time I really, really capture it, which is very strange because uh, I work on behavior and at the same time when I experience interactions, I may not be a great judge of it. Now, that being said, um, 2010, I'd started working in well-being and 2013, I set up my own studio. And uh, um, now the fact is, even now in the uh, city where I had set up my studio those days, uh, we still don't have a good yoga or wellness center or a learning center when it comes to, say, uh, human health and well-being. So which means the opportunity is there and it's just up for your taking, provided you have the skill set. Uh, and I would go ahead and collaborate with various uh, what's it, uh, resource people to make sure that, you know, the best is offered to the city. Uh, and during the same time, somebody else started, uh, well, a woman started another yoga center. That's uh, brilliant because, you know, there's a lot of um, I mean, opportunities available. And um, reached out, uh, she'd reached out to me because uh, a, a course needed to be developed for children's program. Now, here's the thing, even though I've worked in marketing, I'm not somebody who enjoys selling, all right? So, which means I would prefer somebody else to do the selling and I can, as long as I can work on researching and creating content, I'm great with that. And uh, so we had various levels of discussions where, because I'd already had created a course for children earlier. 
it was called Sparkle. And uh, the discussions went on. And then afterwards, I realized it's not really moving forward. By then, I have already discussed what I teach, what is the subject, all, I mean, what's the topic, what's the title of the program, all of it uh, in good faith. Uh, surprisingly, like a few weeks later, I see a poster with the name Sparkle and uh, exactly the course content that I had planned, but then uh, by somebody else. Now, this came as a complete shock to me, as naive as it seems to many people, but for those with Asperger's, they understand that this is normal. Okay, so it comes out as a complete shock. And uh, when confronted, it was, you know, it's a dismissed. And the second part was that there were lots of coaching calls to coaching calls to my clientele. And then suddenly a lot of rumors start to happen and all that. And then you start realizing that this is something that you didn't really ask for, but you are experiencing it firsthand. Now I've worked in the corporate for a pretty long time. Surprisingly, I have found such practices in the spiritual world, in the wellness world, rather than in the corporate. And uh, that's how I guess, Elena, you and I got in touch, because this is something that has been quite baffling. Um, and uh, when I did speak to um, male uh, colleagues or male resource people, they were like, this is a pretty bad blow. And they felt that uh, this low blow could only be delivered by a woman. Uh, so it was, you know, even if you do not reveal the gender, it was surprising how all of them actually indicated that, you know, it is a woman who must have done this. So here I am. Yeah, that, that is shocking. And Newton, did you, did you manage to confront it at that time? Um, so confrontation did not really lead to much. I personally prefer staying away from confrontation in such situations because my time and my resources are limited. Now, there was a disparity in terms of, let's say, resources available. Uh, I work with a very limited uh, resource, completely self-made, whereas somebody else might have a lot more resource to put into it, right? So it was for me, it was better to just focus on my own marketing and, you know, pushing that agenda rather than looking into this problem. But yes, emotionally, it was something that was scarring and it has changed the way I would open up to people in future. Mm, I see. Okay. Yeah. And um, um, as part of the session, we will actually talk about the different ways we can tackle this when um, we are being targeted with such female aggression, right? So keep, keep it. <laughs> Uh, for just a bit later. Thank you, uh, Newton, for sharing. And now, Dagmar, I'd love to know from you as well. Um, this topic is also very um, relevant, very resonant with you. So what kind of experience do you have? Thank you for your question. Um, it sort of uh, lives with me for last at least seven years. And actually, um, not from this negative side, side of it, but actually from the opposite side of it, the word uh, cooperation and sharing uh, is more sort of relevant, but it's it's part of it, right? Both sides of, of the coin is, is with me. Um, and that's because seven years ago, I met with Rostia Gordon-Smith, who some of you might know, and she was the founder, she is the founder of Minerva 21. And at that time, uh, I've met with her for some of the workshops she's done for uh, our corporation. And, and we were talking about um, networking skills of Czech women at that uh, point of time. And, um, and we were saying why for, for Czech ladies networking uh, is a bit of a struggle, is a bit of a different uh, thing than for men, for example, or for, for uh, women from different countries. And uh, I said, you know, I, I think we could, uh, we could um, have a session with ladies from different uh, corporations and then we found this uh, networking program for uh, first females um, from different um, corporations and then men joined us as well and then this whole concept of cooperation and sharing started and this idea of you know not not holding information and experiences for yourself uh, sort of stopped and and we just starting started to inspire each other and 
and that's really with me all the time and and i'm studying more and more within this topic um so that's my story to cut yeah. it short <laughs> yes so you're kind of acting as a role model of things how things should be done right I'm not sure if a role model, you know, but uh, this is what I try to do. <laughs> yeah. Female aggression versus female collaboration and sharing and networking and helping each other, right? And Ragnar, did you, um, I know that um, uh, you kind of experience the positive, you really um, are triggering all that collaboration, but have you ever come across um, um, aggression, either targeted at you or something that you have observed in the workplace? Have you seen that happening? I have. I have experienced it on myself. I have experienced it uh, as a witness. Um, and um, for example, I had a, a female manager um, and um, I was trying to push uh, a project, uh, I think an important project, and uh, she would not support it. Um, because I guess uh, she wanted to, you know, uh, let's say push it herself, you know, to present it herself. So she, she wouldn't have uh, supported uh, to management and she wouldn't let me present it and stuff like that. So that wouldn't sort of uh, be a nice experience. I also witnessed a lot of gossiping and in the Minerva 21, we sort of, uh, we always try to stop gossiping when we, we sit at a table and we hear um, a gossip going around. And we one of our tip uh, to stop it uh, is like, when someone says a gossip, you can answer saying, but she has a nice, uh, she has nice hair or, but she, she does this well, you know, just, just to stop it. Because with this answer, the other one can continue with the gossip because you, with a positive thing, you just stop it, you know. So this is, yeah, this, yeah my experience is when, when I hear a gossip, I just try to stop it with something positive. Mm, right, <laughs> yes. Thank you. Yeah, that's definitely one way to combat it. Yeah, but we will get to that. Sorry, sorry, I'm I'm diverting. <laughs> You're kind of jumping forward. Sorry. Uh, no, 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 don't worry, Dagmar. I want to ask our audience, what kind of um, behavior have you witnessed? Um, maybe something that you have experienced yourself, maybe something that you have observed happening in your department. Would you just put it for us in the chat? And if you have any specific question at any time um, related to anything that is happening or that is that we're talking about, please put it in the chat. Yeah, I'm kind of keeping the chat window open and I will be reacting um, to your comments as well. If I manage, I'm not much of a multitasker. So please, you know, share your experiences with us. Um, yes, Lub Lubna, thank you for, for your comment. Um, yes, Lubna is sharing that she has been harassed and discriminated against uh, quite a lot. Um, but the most painful was by women refusing to support or worse. Yes, absolutely. This is something that is reported a lot. Um, it's, it's funny because I even read some research in which um, a lot of people would much more prefer to have male bosses to female bosses. And when I asked them, why, why would you say that? This is what they mentioned, you know, in my past, my, my boss was not very supportive of me. They always try to put me down. So that's interesting. A lot of the people report the same. What else do we have? Yes, Diane, yeah something similar to, um, to what Dagmar described. Um, Gilda, by the way, is asking to you, Dagmar, uh, whether you have experienced difficulties with women reporting to you. Would you like me to answer now? Yes, absolutely. Yes, okay. I actually, I had different teams and I had teams of only men. Uh, I remember my first team when I was uh, 25 uh, and I had uh, a team of 25 Italian engineers 
all over 40. <laughs> that was one of my biggest challenge. But I've never actually experienced uh, difficulties with a female team because I, I sort of, we, we are a family always. Uh, I create an atmosphere of, uh, I try to, I don't know if I always succeed, but uh, I, I, I always work on trust first. Mm -hmm. And I do everything to, to have an environment of trust. So uh, they sort of, they come to my house for, um, and I cook for them. And so we spend uh, time together out, uh, outside of work. I know everything about their families, about their, you know, so... No, I actually, I've never had issues with female yeah. team members, no. Well, D D Dagmar, next time I'm looking for a boss, I will be applying <laughs> to be part of your team because that sounds quite heavenly. Wait, that, that brings me to um, the question that I wanted to explore first. Um, in here, we can only hypothesize uh, because none of us are researchers. But I have, I have done a, a lot of reading on the subject, and I'm sure that you did too. And so I would love to ask you, ladies, um, what do you think is the cause of the female rivalry? Why is it that women tend to compete with one another? What do you think? So Newton, do you want to start with some comments? Um, so when it comes to any form of rivalry, I think uh, there are two terms. One is hierarchy. If it could be a real hierarchy, like let's say a corporate structure, or it could be perceived one within a social circle. Second is the um, resources. So one could be that internal resources, the intelligence you have, the skill set you have, or the external resources, like let's say uh, what's it, um, a, a promotion to be had. So when you put these two things any, in, in any format, there will be rivalry unfortunately, the way human beings are. Now, when it comes to female rivalry, I think it goes way back into childhood even, because somehow um, um, in, when, you exp when you look at, uh, say, how uh, young girls uh, interact in a group versus how young boys or a mixed group interact, you see that there is a lot of requirement to keep everything in the same level when it comes to girls. Okay, if nobody wants anything more or less than the other. Now, unfortunately, when, they grew, when uh, girls grow up, you realize that unfortunately it's not yet an equal world. So there is often, you know, it's a uh, friction when it comes to different hierarchies. And one way to get to it, unfortunately, again, the method that is resorted is, you know, uh, is personal attacks. So often workplace rivalry, which starts all the way from childhood, in an attempt to keep everything equal, becomes something that has nothing to do with the workplace. It becomes about personal attacks. It becomes about gossip. It becomes about manipulation, character assassinations, uh, clothes you wear, how you look, all that, and may have nothing at all to do with you know, the results you bring in. So, yes. when it comes, so this is something that I had observed when it comes to female workplace live rivalry. Yes, absolutely. And on that, I hear that quite often. Don't you find, ladies, and also our audience, don't you find that we women, we tend to compare ourselves by a very different criteria than our male counterparts, right? Um, there tends to be a lot of these rumors and gossips about looks, for instance, yeah? We tend to compare ourselves based on that and we undermine the other's credibility even by superficial comments about looks. So it's often, as you say, Newton, it's often not so much about performance, uh, but about other things yeah, that are much more personal. Dagmar, do you, what do you think about this? Um, what, what are, in your views, the likely causes causes why would women do that thank you it's a it's a great question and in my experience or what i've observed what i heard what i listen when i listen to the stories of of the ladies uh it always uh comes to the topic of self-confidence uh and what you said nothing it it it's right. It's how how our parents, how our family brought up. And if it was in the atmosphere, you're not good enough, you're not good enough, then 
it then of course you know that that continues throughout your whole life and you will be comparing yourself and uh with uh, the others and uh, that that will continue in 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 your career in your professional life in your personal life so whoever comes next to you 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 will feel that something is missing to you right something is missing in your look something is missing in your you know knowledge something is basically that something is not okay with you so any women uh, any any woman that will appear you will be just uh, in comparison to her doesn't make sense yes. so yeah so this not feeling good enough is just yes. yeah a strong uh, topic in my mind if I may just add, it's like, it's almost like, I mean, at least from where I come from, where women or girls were taught to confirm, whereas boys were taught to compete. And mm -hmm. when, once later, when we come into workplace, there is, you know, there is positive competition, there is collaboration, all that. Somehow we do not know how to, you know, handle that. Mm -hmm. And uh, therefore, then the, the way we resort to it is, you know, in ways that put somebody else down, rather mm -hmm. than, you know, to try to get better. <laughs> Mm, yeah, absolutely. Uh, ladies, I totally resonate with this topic of self-confidence and uh, which all, um, you know, the level of our self-confidence, the level of our self-esteem is always the result of our early uh, childhood upbringing. And um, I very much resonated with what you said, Dagmar, because uh, I am the prime example of uh, a child that mm, has been given messages that made them believe that they were terrible. You know, not even good enough, that they were literally stupid and bad. And so I have ha I've had to do a tremendous amount of work on myself in order to start appreciating who I am, in order to stop myself from being in this constant comparison mode. Because I totally admit, ladies, uh, that I was the one also, you know, looking at who is it? Who is out there? Who is my competition? Yeah. Um, because, because of my low uh, self-esteem. So self-confidence is something that we work with a lot in the program because I really believe that it's the foundation. Lack of self-confidence um, triggers all sorts of very unhealthy behaviors, including the female rivalry, right? So yeah, this is definitely a topic. So if any of you guys are hearing this and you also feel that you know, you might have certain limiting beliefs about who you are, and you are often stuck in the comparison mode, self-confidence is the first thing to work on. Because once you start appreciating who you are, once you start seeing your magic, then uh, you will no longer have such a need to compete with others, because you will realize that there is a place and space for everyone right so yes ladies I totally agree with you low self-confidence um lack of resources Newton something that you have mentioned like you mean lack of lack of personal resources meaning lack of skill set lack of knowledge in order to be able to succeed is that what you were re referring to um, so it could be internal or external. So when it's internal, it's a limited belief that, you know, you don't have the intelligence or the skill set. So it's almost like a negative belief about the self. And that's where self-esteem and self-worth comes in. Uh, and externally, maybe there is just one, uh, let's say, a scholarship to be won, a promotion to be had. So there is limitations there which are more real. Um, but however, in all of it, the way to get over, I mean, or get around it is by self-belief and to believe that the world out there is much, much larger and that, you know, you can really do whatever you put yourself, you know, whatever you decide that you want to be doing. Uh, so once you have that belief, then the how the, will, will automatically happen. Mm -hmm. So that's what I would think about in terms of uh, resources. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, absolutely. Um, so uh, internal resources as well as and perceived, mm -hmm. how do I perceive um, my abilities, my skill set and ability to achieve or succeed, right? But also external resources. And that also um, points to the environment in which we uh, work in, right? Because the environment is influencing us. So um, Dagmar mentioned that uh, she always tries to create this environment of trust, of mutual sharing, of respect. And so in these environments, it's much harder to plant the seed of female reverie, right? Absolutely. But let's face it, we don't live in the ideal world. And there is a lot of company cultures um, that promote uh, competition. Uh, a lot of company cultures that don't give enough opportunities to the people within the company. And so there is lack of opportunities that creates high competition, right? And then it's easier for people to engage in these kind of negative behavior, right? Absolutely. But um, let me see the comments. If uh, Dagmar and Newton, if you saw something that sure. in the chat that you want to react to, please feel free. And I just wanted to add here. So actually, the primary work that I do with the management students and pretty soon with medical college students is to improve, you know, these kind of behaviors, the positive behaviors. So since I work in well-being, one of the very important things, especially in a very competitive college like a management institute, it was important to improve social well-being. Okay. And once you start seeing, you know, the scores improving in terms of collaboration, in terms of empathy, in terms of kindness, you could see that a lot of this negative aspects of competition start to go away. You suddenly start seeing students who are competing because with themselves and because it is fun rather than, you know, say looking at somebody else and saying that that person is to be blamed or that that person is the rival. Instead, they start competing with themselves and start collaborating with others so that the entire group grows. As women, one very important thing to remember is, you know, each other is not the problem. The problem we really have is that, you know, so we are represented in such minor numbers when it comes to the C-suit in terms of CEOs, uh, CMOs, et cetera, the numbers are very less. That is the actual problem that we need to tackle. Uh, instead, unfortunately, we tend to look at things, problems that are like, you know, what is the other person near me doing and how can I, uh, what's it, overcome that? So if we focus on what is the bigger picture in the bigger picture and start as Dagmar rightly pointed out, to collaborating, having empathy, having kindness, all these things start to fade away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, so there is many different ways to tackle this, right? and promotion of these qualities that are typically associated with the feminine, mm. right? Um, this, this helps a lot to tackle female rivalry. Um, I was just reading an article um, about internalized sexism, which is also very much um, one of the causes of these type of competitive behaviors between women. Um, I don't know what you think about that. By, by internalized sexism, I mean that um, there are certain messages, certain stereotypical messages that we have and that we believe in, like men are much, much stronger, much more competent, much more um, suited for leadership, uh, than women, women are much more caring and nurturing. Um, if we take these as truth, and we as women distance ourselves from the women stereotype of being caring and nurturing, and rather learn to thrive mm -hmm. through the masculine uh, traits and qualities, um, then uh, I read that this type of behavior can be very apparent. A woman who learned to succeed through uh, being in her masculine, 
And then she looks down at the women who are displaying more of the feminine traits and qualities. So such women, um, I, there is actually a term um, for women like that who succeeded in male dominated environments, very much being in their own masculine, because as you know, all of you, we all have our feminine side and our masculine side. You don't need to be a man to have a masculine, uh, uh, to have a masculine side, yeah? So those women who really made it in a male dominated environment, thriving on their masculine, they might have a tendency to put down women or not support women who are displaying the qualities that are in line with the uh, female stereotype of being caring and nurturing, yeah? That term is called the queen bee. It's like the alpha woman, right? The alpha woman who got success, she got um, to succeed in her territory, and as soon as there is another woman stepping that territory, she needs to be put down, right? So yeah, the internalized sexism is a big thing, right? When we develop our masculine and we consider the feminine weak, and as a result of that, we don't support other women. Does that resonate with you? What do you think about that? Yeah, Newton, did you did you um, yourself? Yeah, go, go ahead. I was hoping Dagmar would take it up, and after that, maybe okay, because <laughs> I've been speaking a lot. <laughs> Uh, well, um, it actually, it doesn't resonate with me, but I, I have a story behind. Uh, so um, I actually, um, my career went really fast with an ExxonMobil. So I went, uh, I was the first, uh, I, I think, uh, woman in, in ExxonMobil's management. Uh, and for a long time, I was the only woman in ExxonMobil's management. For a long time, I was, I was the only one at the table wearing skirt and and for a long time I wanted to be as them I, I wanted to lead as, as you know in in male leadership uh, with uh, with you know male uh, uh, sort of brain and simply it didn't work I was exhausted I was I was simply after a couple of years I just I, I just couldn't manage it uh, that way, and then I started to study this sort of you know uh, male and female leadership, and I started to um, sort of uh, yeah uh, orient myself uh, uh, in in this topic, and then I just said uh, to myself I uh, after some mentoring of course and coaching of myself and and stuff like that. And I'm still grateful to all my mentors and coaches. I couldn't, I couldn't have managed it without them. Uh, let's just be myself, you know. I'm a woman, and these gentlemen could use my female leadership here, you know, could use my strength as a woman. And and at that time, um, I think they really uh, started to value me much more than before. And at that time, I also started to support much more women, women uh, from our uh, company to join me in the dead team. And today, I have to say, we are actually more women in the management team than men. So I don't want to say it's just my, you know, just sort of... Um, your doing. Uh, <laughs> in my doing. Of course, it's mainly their doing, but um, it's, it's great to see them there. I'm so proud of them. <laughs> yeah, I bet, I bet. And this, Dagmar, what you're saying, it is so true. And I have had that experience myself because being a very driven and ambitious individual and also with a bit of a complicated past in which I certainly didn't consider myself good enough and I was fighting hard in order to prove to everyone else that I was, I kind of resonate with this. Um, in our leadership, there is a space, there is a very important space 
for both traits and qualities. Mm -hmm. The traits and qualities associated with the feminine and the traits and qualities associated with the masculine. And what I observe also um, in my work with women, a lot of women that are heading or that are in senior management positions, they learn to thrive using the masculine traits and qualities. And Dagmar, they report what you're saying. Frequent cases of burnout, they get totally exhausted because it is exhausting to be constantly in that energy of pushing, making stuff happen, being effective, being efficient, being rational. Um, so that gets exhausting. So unless we learn to compensate and balance both uh, forces within us, uh, we could be in trouble. And I see actually both sides. There are, and Newton, I think you mentioned that in your introduction. Um, this is also very much dependent on the culture from which we come in, right? Um, in here in Europe, the, uh, women are really getting empowered and they already know how to use the masculine force, right? And maybe in other cultures, women are still very much in their feminine force and they are um, not resonant or they are, they are unsure how to use, how to step into their masculine and making stuff happen. They rely on other people to do stuff for them, right? So I am a great believer of balance. We absolutely need to know how to be able to tap into each of these life forces within us. The masculine that helps us achieve and get stuff done, but also the feminine that is flowing and caring and nurturing and empathetic and collaborative. And this is what we need at the workplace in order to combat the harmful competition and the female aggression, right? So this is so important. Um, this, is, this is also, this is actually, I consider it so important that it's one part, it's one module of the She Leads program. We really investigate the leadership and all the qualities that we can bring into the leadership. And we investigate our inner relationship with the masculine and with the feminine. I myself, I had a ter terrible relationship with the feminine. That's why I was almost in that queen bee mode because I, I considered the feminine as extremely weak. I never had a role model of feminine. I only had a role model of the masculine and the feminine for me was not achieving. It was not getting anywhere. There was no value of the feminine. So I had to also do a huge amount of work in order to understand the value of the feminine and to reconnect with my own feminine. And this is something that we do with the participants of the She Leads program. And there is a huge amount of surprises that people have when they go through that process. Yeah, so big one. Okay, um, so likely causes. Well, there is actually, it, 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 I do believe that it's a whole bunch of factors that contribute to the female aggression at the workplace. But ladies, I don't know what you think, but here is what I think. You know, the brain cannot quiet um, outpace evolution, meaning that the female aggression is also part of this evolutionary wiring that we have we have the sexual competition, right? That is based in the evolutionary need. We as women evolutionarily, we were always competing um, for food, for shelter, for mates, for suitable mates that could protect us, right? That is evolution. And, you know, unfortunately, unfortunately or fortunately, I mean, who knows? but we still have certain instinctual forms of behavior, right? And so this is, this is another cause. Some women have it more than others, but yeah, we do compete with other women for, in the workplace, we, we compete for our 
um, reputation for a job position for a job promotion. So it also is related to that um, ancient wiring. Wouldn't you think so? Elena, if I could just add there, um, because I think I come from a very contradicting situation. I, um, India being a very patriarchal country, I come from a family which is all boys. So I kind of literally grew up as a boy. So uh, when it comes to my work style, as uh, Dagmar also mentioned, I think it was very, very masculine. All right. So possibly Possibly that was the reason why in a, in a male dominated world, it was very easy for me to rise just as Dagmar. I think by the time I was 28, it was managing around 11 countries across Asia Pacific. But that being said, just as Elena also mentioned, there was a burnout that happened. I was completely disconnected with the feminine side. And it's great that you have this course which teaches people to, I mean, everyone to access both their masculine and their feminine side. And that actually is part of like, you know, the education that we really need to do uh, so that we can uh, tap into the collaborative, the kindness part, as well as the part which is willing to, you know, go ahead and compete uh, within the ethical, uh, say, boundaries. So that's something it's, that's very fascinating. Cultural background is very important. Uh, but then that being said, India has this beautiful uh, area where, you know, the president is a woman, one of the first presidents, uh, prime ministers, a, like a democratically elected prime first of the one of the first prime ministers in the world is a woman from India. Uh, likewise, you would see Chanel is a woman from India, the CEO for Chanel. Likewise, uh, you had uh, Indra Nui who was head heading for Pepsi. So you do find that even despite a culture which is very oppressive when it comes to women, you do find these stalwarts of women who kind of, you know, overcame that boundary. And just because they had that boundary of patriarchy to overcome, they could do exceedingly well, well when it comes to work. And just one more po additional point that I wanted to make was uh, when you look into uh, data, you would see that female rivalry, the queen bee sy syndrome that you mentioned is extremely high in medical conditions. I mean, medical uh, industry, whether it's nurse, or whether it's doctors or whether it's staffs, the, um, the woman who is at a higher level of power, she tries to curtail women at a lower power, uh, level of power. Uh, you, I mean, I've had the opportunity to discuss with nurses and many of them would you know claim that you know it is it is a woman that's making them so terribly miserable so here you have an industry where uh, medical industry is one area where you have e almost equal representation of women and men and there we see the rivalry is incredibly high and very very abusive so it's 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 a i mean it's a problem that has to be tackled from various areas as Zagmar has pointed out in one of the uh, chat messages you know it has to be you know taken up with the hr so there has to be systemic course to the problem but also at the same time a lot of training as Elena mentioned has to be done so that we do not act out from our insecurities instead we act out on from our best version and therefore build a culture which is going to be great for everyone out there yes Newton totally agree and that's a wonderful transition to the last part of what is it we do in order to tackle this in order to prevent this from happening because such culture is not conducive to good results and to people feeling well working in the company, right? So what do we do? Let's uh, give our audience some suggestions of what can we do. Let's divide this into what can be done on the systemic level yeah, you mentioned, Newton, that there are certain things that can be deployed by HR or even by the leaders within their different business units. And then there are certain things that can be done on the individual level. Yeah. So uh, as to the systemic changes, any ideas, ladies, any tips that you would give to our audience? What have you seen uh, being done that works very well in order to prevent this kind of behavior happening? Okay, so um, with this work, uh, upcoming work with this medical college, one of the things that we're really trying to put in, into practice is making sure just as there is recourse to harassment, okay, there is also recourse to rivalry from the same gender as well. Okay, so what is uh, acceptable behavior, what is not, and what is a solution that can be uh, given has to be very well encapsulated by the HR and has to be trained both to the seniors as well as uh, the new entrants into the uh, system. So making sure that there is a very easy way to access this information. 
um, know your knowing your rights and being, making sure that there is a way to uh, say come out with this problem okay instead of uh, having to instead of having to fester and you know what's it um, um, suffer because of it so this yeah. is something that I would recommend, recommend systemically. I think Dagmar has a lot more experience in this area, so. Well, uh, I will not talk about uh, like HR policies and harassment policies because that's, you know, we, we would have to do a session for HR managers here, but I just want to talk about more like how we can support each other as human beings. And it doesn't really matter if you work in T-Mobile or Deloitte or ExxonMobil. It's like, wh what do we do if we see this happening, or if we see that we suffer it from, we suffer from it? Like you said, Elena, that some years ago you just you felt insecure. And so, what do we do if we see it happening, or if we feel like it? And um, so, so I myself, you know, I, for example, I, I started this network and you can start this network like, you know, in the kitchen, drink your lunch breaks to do a network on uh, sharing about a topic of your interest or you are a fresh uh, returnee from maternity leave and you can share how you've managed and uh, 10 different other mothers can share from uh, can learn from your uh, great lessons learned or uh, you have a dying parent and uh, and uh, 10 other colleagues of yours can uh, learn from you how you are managing so you can just give out you know you can you just don't hold this information for yourself, how you are managing some situation of your life and you can just share, you can give out. And that's what I'm thinking about, just little things, you know, that mm -hmm. makes a huge difference in some sort of life situation for someone else. And then for what I've done, like an, an additional step, which you don't have to do because that's just my life story I start to study about you know psychotherapy and about myself of course you know first I thought this is for myself but then I thought okay maybe this could happen help also to the others how all this you know self-confidence story works so so you know and talking about this topic you can start if you have this self-confidence gap you can start with a you know, little thing, you know, you, I'm sure many of you know this, but uh, create a little, you know, uh, notebook and every day write three things that you appreciate uh, about yourself. And after, you know, 30 days, you will be surprised uh, what you can observe about yourself. So, mm. yeah, I Absolutely. just don't want to steal uh, much of our time, but these are just little tips. Yes, thank you, Dagmar. Journaling is definitely such a beautiful exercise because journaling helps us build self-awareness, right? You see, a lot of the women who are engaging in the female aggression, this is what they lack. They lack self-awareness. They, they don't even know they're doing it, let alone knowing why they're doing it, yeah? I certainly didn't know that I was doing stuff in the past because I didn't have the awareness. So thank you for mentioning this because this is something that we can do on the individual level. Let's get to know this amazing human being. We are all unique, right? Um, and if we learn to understand what our uniqueness is, we will then see no point in myself comparing to you, Dagmar or Newton. Uh, um, look, um, when we get into the comparison, we will always find something on the other that they are much better at than us, right? Um, so it's a totally fruitless effort. So let's engage in all the type of activities to help build self-awareness, which will help us build self confidence this is really the foundation of all right so thank you for mentioning that so that is something that we can do on the individual level and then in order to prevent this from happening we said you know why don't you set up something uh 
to share with other people your experiences. Um, this is actually the, what I did five years ago, initially, before it became a thing, the Sheely's program. Uh, I was just sharing my own journey and what I have learned and all the fuck ups that I have caused to myself and to other people and what I have learned and what I had to learn the hard way. Um, when it comes to the systemic, I mean, we definitely need to have HR policies in place so that people know what their rights are. People need to be trained. Managers need to be trained in order to be able to handle these kind of situations, right? Going back to the individual level. Also, um, ladies, you know, stop me if, if you want to comment on something, but um, apart from building our own self-esteem and self-confidence, we also have to challenge our beliefs and challenge our individual biases. It might be that you have an internal bias against women. I had it. Maybe whoever is listening in here, just ask yourself, you know, um, when you judge the performance of your bosses, for instance, would you judge them the same way if your boss is a woman or if your boss is a man? Sometimes we judge women much more harshly, right? So let's challenge, let's identify and challenge our own beliefs um, and biases. So that's something that something else that we can do on the individual level. Um, also, when it comes to the beliefs, you know, when I when I work with people, I also find that many of them they they really have these truths about the world that they hold dear that are stopping them, they're limiting them. Think about it. If you believe that your boss who is a woman, is not supporting you. If she is trying to put you down, you know, will you be able to, you know, if you really believe that women bosses are not good, that they are not supportive, uh, you need to be aware that your belief is shaping your reality. Maybe through this belief, you will start perceiving only certain, or you will start um, focusing only on certain behaviors of your boss. Look what she said, look what she did, but you will be ignoring all the other things that she does or says that might be in support of you, yeah? There is this wonderful saying, be very careful what you aim at or be very careful what you focus on, because what you focus on grows. If your inner focus is, women make shitty bosses, women bosses put me down, then it might be precisely the type of behavior that you will be focusing on, and you will be ignoring everything else. So I also, I, I really want to challenge you, all, all of you, to challenge your own beliefs. Is it not a belief of yours that, you know, gets you into these kind of situations? Yeah. What else? Uh, it's, it's two o'clock, so we need to kind of close it up. Do you have any other tip? What is it? Well, actually, I, I can think of one. I don't want to over, overtake this conversation, but there is one that I really want to share. Um, if any of you are experiencing female aggression um, directly, don't take it personally. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, it's not at all about you. It's not about you. It's about them. Maybe you're actually dealing with someone like me 20 years ago who was totally insecure. I was guarding my space and I was monitoring my competition, okay? So if you came across me 20 years ago, be careful. So um, it's not about you. It's probably about the person who is targeting you, yeah. Anything else, lady? Something you know that you really want to point out in here? I think 
think, Elena, when it comes to darkness, let's say female role plays rivalry, I always think it's better to put our energy into finding that switch and turning on the light rather than looking at what is causing that darkness. And as you rightly pointed, most often the darkness has nothing to do with you in personally, it is the other person's insecurity. So it is very important to you know, stay focused on your vision to help yourself grow, keep learning, and uh, yeah, various techniques that can be utilized. And whenever you experience the negative part of it, try and find out what, how is it affecting you? Does it, um, does it make you feel that this is not a fair world? Does it make you feel unworthy? What exactly is that emotion that, you know, it elicits? And then work on the opposite of it. So if you feel that you're not worthy enough because uh, how a particular woman has behaved with you, then work on improving your self-worth. On the other side, if you feel it's not fair, then work on creating a fairer place to work and experience life. So look at how it affects you and then start working on it because what you would do would have an impact on many people around you so I think it's it's a, it's it's in many ways very powerful to experience the darkness because that's when you really find your light I love it Newton and I think that emphasizes the point of be careful what you're focusing on because we can spend so much energy trying to figure out why is this happening uh, let's just focus on the energy of what can I do so that it doesn't happen, right? Uh, can, I, can I contribute to a better culture, to a better uh, atmosphere in my unit? What can I do? Because also I feel that um, focusing on the darkness, you know, sometimes we misinterpret people's intentions. We misinterpret situations, right? Something happens. Someone says something and without us knowing what the facts are, we interpret this. And if we do have self-limiting beliefs, we will typically interpret that in the wrong way. <gasps> How dare she did that to me? And you're already trying to interpret the intention of the other. She did it because she wants my job. She did it because she said it because this and that. That's misinterpretation. That is uh, uh, making assumptions, right? Rather than reacting to facts. So yes, Newton, let's focus on what we can do. And let's also um, be mindful. What, what is it I'm reacting to? Am I reacting to reality or assumptions? Sometimes we feel so unfairly treated but it's not the reality. It's just something that we have misinterpreted, right? Right, I mean, my goodness, we could go on and on and on. So um, yes, Dawn, as you said, stop the stories in your head. Always get clarifications before making assumptions. This is a wonderful closure sentence, right? I also thank you, Lubna, <clears throat> for your comments. Um, um, I'm sorry that we didn't manage to get through all of these, um, but thank you very much for sharing the experiences. I will be actually reacting to your comments. I will be responding to all your comments later on. Yeah, so that uh, I, I want you to feel that we've seen them. We just didn't have the time to go through it and I will react later on. So um, I want to thank you, Dagmar and Newton, for this interesting conversation. Um, if you just had one word or one sentence as in conclusion, um, something that you would like to offer to our audience, what would it be? One word or one sentence in order to tackle this topic of female rivalry. Uh, Dagmar, does something come to your head as one sentence conclusion? or sharing something? I would just say, mm, I would just say uh, to each of us, we are good enough. Yes, thank you. Absolutely, we are good enough. Yes, we might not be perfect, but I wouldn't even aspire to go that way, yeah? There is a lot of failure if you're aiming for perfection. Newton. Um, any any word, any sentence? 
I, I guess Dagmar said it the best, but I would say that um, female rivalry does exist, but you already have within you what is needed to help you rise above it. So choose to rise. Yes, thank you. Wonderful. Ladies, thank you so much. And our audience, thank you for being in here. Um, I will be replying to your comments and I will send you a follow up messages. And if you want to connect with myself or any of the ladies, please do so. We will be super happy to react to your questions or comments. Yeah. So thank you so much. And I will see you probably in January or February for another talk. And if any of you wants to know more about the She Leads program, please get in touch. We're starting the next cohort in March 2023. So thank you so much and hope to see you soon. Thank you. Thank you, Alana. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, everyone.